Based on my experience as someone who was once a member of Herpetology Club and as someone who teaches zoology to undergraduate students, there are a lot of people that think turtles are amphibian. It's most likely caused by the oversimplification of what schools or many educators or perhaps articles say about amphibian when talking to the non-scientific community. You know, the thing where people say amphibians are animals that live in both water and land. While it is mostly true, and it is literally the meaning of their name, that trait is not unique to amphibian. There's a lot of animal that could live in both water and land. And that's why it's kinda understandable why many people think turtles are amphibian. But of course, turtles are reptiles. Although there is an amphibian that have turtle in its name. The topic of this video, turtle frog. Which is the weirdest looking frog that you can find right now, in my opinion at least. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is turtle frog? <coughs> turtle frog is, of course, an amphibian. And if it's not obvious enough, it is an anoran. Now, whether it should be categorized as frog or toad could be debatable. It is not that rough looking, kinda look moist and shiny to be honest, so in that regards, they seem a bit froggish. But lifestyle and posture wise, they seem a bit toadish. Well, honestly, they look so weird that it doesn't really look like a toad either. That's why they are called turtle frog, because people thought they look like a turtle without the cell. Even though that statement is weird in a lot of ways. I mean, a turtle without the shell is not even a turtle anymore because the shell is literally a part of their body. Some say they look somewhat similar to shellless turtle ancestor. But for me, they kinda remind me of some tapinocephalians. Or you know, some kind of mutated monster or some kind of alien in popular media. Honestly, looking at their face, they would fit as gradle frog if you know what that is. Okay, um. Probably way off on a tangent, so let me just return to the script. Sorry about that. Turtle frog is classified in the Myobatrachidae family. In fact, the family is named after them, Myobatrachus, with only one species, Myobatrachus guldi. Guldi is used to honor John Gould, who was a renowned ornithologist based in Australia back at that time. While Myobatrachus is... I'm not sure actually. I couldn't find the etymology in any publication, but I do know batrakos means frog in Greek, and the mio prefix is often used to indicate muscle or muscular, taken from the Greek word mis, so maybe it is named mio batrakos because they look muscular? Who knows? What do you think? Anyway, they can only be found in southwestern Australia, so yes, their distribution is very limited, which is why they are not that publicly known, albeit they look interesting, to say the least. Speaking of their look, let's talk about their morphology. Turtle frog is small. The largest known turtle frog doesn't even exceed 5 cm long. They have small head, with a pair of prominent dark eyes, a pair of small but still noticeable nostrils, yet a barely noticeable mouth line. Their body is roundish and stocky, with pinkish to brownish wrinkly skin. They kinda look like a... Uh... Let's just say they would fit perfectly in Zay Frank's channel. Most of them have yellowy spots, especially on their limbs and sides. These spots extend to their belly. Just like other extant anurans, their hind limbs have 5 digits while their forelimbs have 4 digits. Just like most other highly terrestrial anurans, they have no webbings between their digits. However, what's quite unique about their feet is, in the case of turtle frog, their front digits are bigger compared to their hind digits. In fact, their forelimbs are so muscular to the point where they seem to be more prominent than their hind limbs. A trait which might not seem that big of a deal, but it is unique for anurans. Because most anurans, even the highly terrestrial ones, should have prominent hind limbs that they use for leaping. In the case of turtle frog, they have a large pectoral girdle, hence their chest is naturally white, and their natural gait looks like a flexing gimbro. But why are they built like this? Well, actually, let's just move on to the behavior section to talk about it. But before that... Like I said earlier, turtle frogs are highly terrestrial. I mean, if you are familiar with this region, you would know that this is mostly a semi-arid sandy region. There are forests towards the coast of southwestern Australia, but turtle frogs are not typically found there. They mostly inhabit the shrublands, which might sound weird for amphibian, 
but it's not unheard of. I mean, one of the most memed frog is a desert frog after all. So, how do they survive the hot and arid habitat? Well, they simply burrow. They spend most of their time burrowed deep in the sand. That is the reason for their morphological adaptation, by the way. Their muscular forelimbs with stocky and thickened digits are used to dig sands. Okay, so some of you might have guessed that already, but let's be clear here. It is still unique because other burrowing anurans don't have a highly muscular forelimbs. Not to this extent, at least. Other burrowing anurans typically use their hind limbs to dig. Some even evolve specialized structure on their hind feet to help this, like the spade-like tubercle of spadefoots and balloon frogs. Keep in mind that turtle frog is not the only frog to exhibit forelimbs burrowing. Hemisus marmoratus also burrow with their forelimbs. Hence, they also have muscular forearms. But yeah, just look at this. Their hind limbs are still overall bigger compared to their forelimbs. So yes, again and again, I would like to emphasize how unique turtle frogs are among the extant anurans. Oh, and because of this gait, they don't move around by leaping. Instead, they just waddle around. They feed on termites. Hence, their big and muscular forearms are also useful to dig through termite nests. I did say they spend most of their time burrowed, right? They typically surface after rains. After heavy rains, most of them emerge, and that is their time to reproduce. Males will call for females with deep throats. After mating, they will return to their burrow. And yeah, after a while, females will lay around 40 to 50 eggs in moist sand over 1 meter beneath the surface. So, what about their tadpoles, you might ask? Do they, you know, swim in the sand maybe? Well, no, not really. They swim inside the egg. By that I mean, they don't emerge from the eggs until after they are fully developed into little frogs. This is also not unique to the turtle frog, by the way. Many highly terrestrial anurans exhibit this direct development. That's why their eggs are relatively large, to supply enough nutrients until they fully develop. Next, I would like to talk a little about their evolutionary relationship. Because of their unique appearance, I have seen some old publications stating they might be related to ancient frogs from the Mesozoic era, mainly because of their wide pectoral girdle. Molecular analysis showed that the family diverts in the Cretaceous period. However, Myobatrachidae itself is a diverse family, with several recognized genera. So the question is, what about the turtle frog's closest relative? Are they as weird as the turtle frogs? Well, in my opinion, they are surprisingly quite normal. Arenofrin, aka sandhill frogs, which is their closest relative, still have the, let's just say, typical anuran look. Sandhill frogs also dig with their forelimbs, by the way, but their forelimbs are still not as big and muscular as turtle frogs. Their head is also not as small as turtle frogs. Another closely related species, albeit not as close as Arenofrin, is Metacrinia aka forest toadlets, and this one looks even more, let's just say normal. So yeah, turtle frog is indeed a unique one. Past research had suggested the common ancestor of Arenofrin and Myobatracus dates back to the Miocene epoch, maybe even Pliocene, which is quite recent. All in all, we don't really know that much about turtle frogs. The fact that they are burrowed most of the time and they are quite small makes them elusive. That being said, they are considered least concerned by the IUCN red list, so who knows? Perhaps we'll discover even more interesting facts about them in the future, maybe even some fossil records of similar looking species. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, just clarifying, nothing I said in this video is derogatory. Whenever I say they look weird, it's 100% non-derogatory. Honestly, I kinda like how they look. Anyway, enjoy your day.